Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken Davis. to go to do this show? I said, I want to go where people wear cheese on their heads. Because <laughs> I like being around people that need to be put away. That's okay, I'll tell you, if you're proud to be a cheese head, be a cheese head. You're proud to be American, flow the, flow the flug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting old is terrible, isn't it? <laughs> if you're proud to be an American, fly the flag. Do you agree with that? <laughs> i tell you something. I wanted to start this show to honor the people who have given their blood and their lives and given up so much so that we can sit here and laugh tonight. And my friends said, well, maybe we ought not to do that, not because they don't believe in that, but because they said, you know, this is kind of unique to the time because what's happened recently, maybe 10 or 15 years from now, it won't seem so important. I'm telling you, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, it'll be important. And we still ought to be doing it. That's why I'm here. I hope the cameras are catching people who applaud. This is America. You know, there is, there is a library in Boulder, Colorado, that refuses to display the flag for fear that it might offend someone. Excuse me, oh wait a minute, these people need to be put away. <laughs> Let me tell you why, because in the front of that lobby of the library is an art exhibit that you wouldn't want one of your children or grandchildren to have to walk by to see. But they don't want to fly the American flag for fear that someone will be offended. Now let me tell you my theory about this, then I'm going to get off of this. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I think America ought to be a country that welcomes people from all over the world, no matter what the color of their skin, no matter what their religion. But I'm telling you, if you're in America and you are embarrassed by the flag of America, you're in the wrong country. Yeah. Person who wears cheese on their head Ain't afraid of offending nobody. <laughs> what if you were like that? Oh, I'm afraid that someone will be offended by the cheese on my head. <laughs> well, Limburger cheese, maybe. <laughs> I'm afraid somebody will be offended. What if somebody doesn't like Colby cheese? What if they like cottage cheese? <laughs> Large curd. <laughs> I see some of you ladies would like to have this hat. You know this thing is barely staying on here? <laughs> and anyway, you ain't the cheese state. Why cheese? You ain't the cheese state. I know you raise cheese here. Well, whatever you do. 
I know you got cheese plants here. But you aren't the cheese state. You're the dairy state. what we need. <laughs> this way, this way, we don't offend nobody. Got milk? <laughs> That's why I'm here. This is a hard America. This is this is the kind of people I grew up with. This is the kind of place you don't have to mess around with some of the dumb stuff that's going on in this world. Is it just me or things backwards a little bit? We need to get them straightened out again. And one way to get them straightened out again is to laugh a little bit. God has a sense of humor. He does. He wants you to laugh tonight. How many of you believe God has a sense of humor? Raise your hand. Yeah, there you go. That's right. If you don't believe that, look around you a little bit. <laughs> There's some folks here already checking their watch. <laughs> oh, it's way past my bedtime. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. You know how I know this? Because of the way he created me. God gave me an intensely competitive spirit. And then he gave me the hand-eye coordination of a carp. <laughs> you guys have those fishing shows here? I love coming here because they got those fishing shows on, on Saturday. It's, those are hilarious, man. There ain't nothing happening on that show. You know, just two old guys in a boat going shoosh. And they talk about the boat. See, they're advertising the boat. Yeah, sure good to be here in this bass boat. <laughs> Only costs $60,000. <laughs> Look at that nice Evan Rude motor back there. Yeah. If you got a bass boat, you need an Evan Rude motor. And I got this nice line that we're using. They never, hardly ever catch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love being here. Yep. Whoa, I got one on. I got one on. Now, those guys never catch a carp. <laughs> you ever see him catch a carp? No, no. Here's what you see. Oh, Fred, get that camera over here. I got me. Oh, I got me a good one on here. Now, get that camera, cause and we want to make sure we get a good shot of the of the Evan Rood motor and the nice sixty thousand bucks. Yeah. Get that. Get. Oh, look at here. And he pull it up, and it'd be a fish that long. <laughs> and he pulls it out. He said, look, it's a largemouth bass. <laughs> when he pulled it out, it was a smallmouth bass, but he made a largemouth bass out of that thing. And then here's the part that really surprises me, is the fact that they make a big deal of letting it go. Catch and release. They all, a lot of people here remember when we were boys and girls, there was no catch and release. It was catch and eat. <laughs> you remember that? But they, oh, nice fish. Oh, look, we have to be careful. Ooh, we'll put his mouth back to the way it was. We put him in the water. Now, come on, breathe, little fish. Breathe, little fish. <laughs> they give him that little shock. Breathe, little fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, there we let him go. Because that is the humane thing to do. <laughs> we got any children here? Any young children? So imagine if I were to throw a piece of candy to that boy. Maybe have it tied to a string. <laughs> I say, boy, you want a piece of candy? What is your name, son? Shout it out. I say, Aaron, you want a piece of candy? And Aaron grabbed that piece of candy. And then I go down there and I grab Aaron by the lip and I bring him up here and I walk <laughs> him around and I drag him and I throw him over there and I pull him behind the cow. I get him down on the cow and then I pull him back and forth and I bring him back here and then I go, okay, go back to your seat.
nobody in here would go, oh, wasn't that humane? We look at that catch and release, we go, oh, that's so humane. The lakes are filled with fish going, oh, 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 Lord, that hurt. Oh. Other fish come up, go, what happened to you? And they go, oh, someone was humane to me. Oh, oh. God gave me an intensely competitive spirit. And yet I, I'm like a fish with lips. I have no ability. I'm also old. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> and I try to be young. So I went snowboarding. See, now snowboarding is totally different than skiing. In skiing, you have control of your legs. You can move like this. Snowboarding, listen before you go. Your feet are nailed to a board. <laughs> there are only two positions in snowboarding. This position and this position. The guy teaching me, he says, you're doing it the wrong way. <laughs> the snowboard, you're doing it the wrong way. He said, you put your rear end into the hill like this as you fasten downhill. You put your rear end into the hill. Then he said, when you go the other way, you put your face into the hill on your rear end down the hill and you go that way. <laughs> I said, how do you get from here? to here. You know how? <laughs> you can't even be cool snowboarding. See, there's a bunch of young men and women here, uh, good-looking kids, and they they need to be cool. They know you got to be cool. Well, with skiing, as a youngster, I used to be able to, you know, slide up to a good-looking girl that I wanted to meet. And it was cool. I could slide up to her. I could go up to her. <laughs> and I have my little poles there, and I go, so how's it going? <laughs> you can't do this with a snowboard. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> so I don't snowboard no more. But I decided I had to do something because my body's letting go on me. So I bought a set of 150 pounds of weights. And I have a theory kind of a thing that I do. If a little bit is good, a lot is better. <laughs> and so I bought 150 pounds of weights and I put all 150 on there and I lifted that 10 times. Not bad for an old guy. I got it up there 10 times. And then I couldn't, I could not, I could not. <laughs> I said to my wife, take five pounds off of each side. <laughs> She took five pounds off each side. This is a true story. I lifted that maybe three times, and then I could, I could not, I could not. She, I said, honey, take 10 pounds off each side. She took 10 pounds off of each side. I lifted that maybe 20 times, and then I couldn't do it anymore. We got to where all that was left was the bar, just the bar. <laughs> and I lifted that maybe four or five times times, just four or five times. My body was straining, sweat was coming from everywhere. I said, sweetheart, take the bar away. <laughs> she took the bar away 
and I lifted my own fist maybe seven or eight times and then I could not get them up anymore I wish you could have been there must have looked sort of strange so I let my arms go and my wife was looking at me she said oh do you look good because my muscles were all swollen oh they were big like when I was young big muscles had veins the veins were some of the veins were bigger than my legs big muscles she said oh you look good I thought I'm gonna take me a shower and then I'm gonna romance my wife I went I got in the shower I put shampoo in my hand and I couldn't get the shampoo up The only way I could shampoo was to put it in my hand. Seven days like that. That's why you never see, you know, you go to a basketball game, somebody make a basket, they go, ha, 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 ha. You never see them Olympic weightlifters do that. <laughs> Watch the next time. They lift about 900 pounds. Watch them afterwards. <laughs> Laughter is good for you, but not that good, ma'am. <laughs> You're spitting all over the people around you. <laughs> you married to that woman? <laughs> the guy's going, not me, no, no. That's okay, you laugh all you want. I'd rather have five people of you, like you, at a show with me than those folks that go, there's a couple of them here. I, I, see, I see a couple of them going. We need to laugh easy. You know what? People ought to be busting down the doors of our church to find out what's so fun, what's so exciting. We don't have to walk around looking like we ate something bad. It's okay to laugh. God is not displeased with your laughter. In fact, we ought to be, we ought to be more like dogs. We need to be more like dogs. We really do. How many of you have dogs? How many of you have dogs? What kind of, do what kind of dog you have? She's still... Who has a dog? <laughs> Who has a real dog? What kind of dog you got? Dachshund. <laughs> he got a swear word. You got a dog with no legs. <laughs> Who has a dog? Do you have a dog? You don't have a dog. Who has a dog? What? What? Who? What? What is it? A Doberman. There's a dog. Now, I have never seen a... She's <laughs> I have a hunch you're mispronouncing that name. 
What's your dog? Jiu-Jitsu. I have never met a Jiu-Jitsu. But I can guess what they're like. Shut up. Shut up. Doberman, there's a dog. People don't mess with the Doberman. Somebody break into your house. Their greatest worry is something going wet on their shoe. <laughs> Where's the Doberman people? Nobody breaks into their house. Word gets around. They have a Doberman. Oh, don't go where the Doberman is. Because there's a law. First you meet a Doberman, and right after that you meet Jesus. Did you know, <laughs> look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> you need to get to know me. <laughs> Cause after this show, I'm washing your mouth out with soap. <laughs> Did you know that a jujitsu <laughs> can kill a Doberman? Get caught in his throat. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why you see a lot of Dobermans walking around going... Jiu-Jitsu! <coughs> 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 You, you love your little dog, don't you? Every morning you get up and say, Oh, look at the little swear word. <laughs> I love your dog, I love your dog. Where was another one over here? And you love your dog, dog with no legs. <laughs> what was it again? Dachshund, dachshund. He said, dachshund. Hey dog, you call your dog. Come here, come here, come here. Good boy, stay. Come here, come here, come here. Good boy, stay. It's easier than hiring a housekeeper. Come here, come here. Good boy. Floor's all clean. <laughs> I love seeing Dachshund on a slippery floor. <laughs> You love your dog, don't you? You love your dog, don't you? To a dog, your family. To a cat, your staff. <coughs> Excuse me. Jitsu. <laughs> I'm going to admit to you right up front, I'm not right. A lot of you agreed with that way too quickly. <laughs> my idea of a great Saturday morning is to ride my motorcycle out to the edge of the highway near our home and sit there with my wife's hair dryer and just point it at cars. <laughs> you ought to see him slam on the brakes. Then I love chasing the cars. Every once in a while I just chase one. And eventually they'll pull over, even though I'm on a moped. <laughs> and then you just go by and go, <laughs> and you can see in their head that they don't want to know you real well. But at least you're happy, at least you know that you're, and it isn't just me. See, that's when we laugh the hardest, is when we loosen up a little bit and see that it's everywhere. Why not keep our eyes open and see some of the joy that God has, if we just look and see? How many of you enjoyed the song that was played at the beginning of this program?
You know what interests me? As I watch those groups and I watch the groups on TV, it just tickled me to death to see when they hit those high notes. You ever notice this? The leg come way up in the air like that. They all say, can you see? And the leg come way up. We don't do that when we tell jokes. <laughs> you don't tell you jungle. And then the guy came around the corner and the elephant sat on him. <laughs> no, we don't do that. All kinds of weird stuff happening to me. I'm losing my hair. My hair isn't turning gray, but it's falling out by big bunches. Every time I take a shower, it's a little toupee in the bottom of the thing. <laughs> That's my hair. That's my hair, and it's going away. And I do not want it to go away. I'm looking at some of you. <laughs> I want it to stay there. I want, I want it to be there. Actually, I'm not real scared, because although the hair stopped growing on my head, I got hair growing out of everything else you can imagine on my head. Isn't that terrible? Man, stuff. My son-in-law, Scott Fowler, we were ha spent Christmas together last year. He turned over and looked at me and he said, you know what, you got the whole nativity scene right in your ear. <laughs> my wife thinks it's gross, but I think it's for the future. If I ever lose my hair, I'm gonna let that grow. Comb it up around there. It <laughs> It'll look bad when I go swimming. <laughs> and my wife had nothing to do with that. She said, you gotta take care of that. You're in the public all the time. You gotta do something to take care of that. So I ordered out of the back of a magazine. They had two choices. You could buy one machine that cost about $60,000. And you could buy another machine that cost two and a half dollars. And that one was just a little squeezy thing like that. And if you, you so I ordered two of them. Well, they came in the mail one day. My wife was in the other side of the office, and I opened the box, and I thought, here it is. You know, this will be great. Now I can, my kids won't make fun of the hair in my nose and my ears, and my son-in-law, Scott Fowler, won't mess with me no more. So I took one of those out, and what it is is a little squeezy thing. It's got two tubes. One of the tubes rotates when you squeeze it, causing the little serrated edges to move past each other. It's supposed to cut the hair. I stuck that in my nose and I squeezed it. <laughs> it don't cut nothing. <laughs> but it grab everything. <laughs> now if you can picture this. I squeezed that, tears started shooting out of that eye. I'm running around the house with this thing. It dangling out of my nose, screaming in pain. Ow! 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 My wife come running out of her office. I said, honey, I squeezed it. It grabbed everything. What am I going to do? Never go to your wife with a problem like that. She said, here, I'll take care of it. And she yanked. My foot come up like that. That's where the tenors get it from. <laughs> now those boys are all nice and neat and everything, and that's because every night they, they're doing that. That's how come they got high voices, too. <laughs> is it just me, or does it feel a little bit good to laugh tonight, huh? Are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> All that crazy stuff about, you know, we shouldn't fly the flag because it might, it might offend someone. All that crazy stuff is backwards. It is, it's just backwards. Here's another thing they tell you that's backwards, and I'm going to back it up. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to rewind it for you. No matter what anybody has told you in the past, here's the truth from Ken Davis. Men and women are different. <laughs> we are different. God made us different so that we could get along with each other. <laughs> so that life would be more fun. 
And now that I got your attention, ladies, may I ask a favor of you? This is my chance to try and help you understand where we're coming from. If you have something to say to us, say it! <laughs> Don't put it in the form of a question we can't answer. Every man in the room now is going, oh, brother, preach this. Preach this. We are paralyzed. From the moment we come, become married, we begin to be asked questions for which there is no answer. And we begin to freeze because we want to give the right answer, but there is no right answer. <laughs> Son, what was your name? Right back there, what is your name again? Aaron, Aaron, Aaron I'm going to teach you some lessons here that will serve you well for the rest of your life. <laughs> the first thing I want to tell you, son, is this that I've been married for 35 years to the same woman and I love her more than anything on the face of the earth, but she needs to be put away. <laughs> listen to me, Aaron, listen to me, son. You know, don't you think for a second I'm mocking her. I am not mocking her because the day they come in that white truck to pick her up, I'm crawling in the back with her because I don't want to live with anybody else. I don't want to be with anybody else. I love her. But she asked me questions. <laughs> I'm in this beautiful suite they have provided for us. There's a fruit bowl in there you can't get into. It's wrapped in plastic. The only way you can get through that plastic is with a blowtorch. So I called down to the front desk and they sent up a maintenance man. And he opened the fruit basket, and it was so huge and wonderful, I thought I would show it to my wife. And I came out of the room where the fruit basket was, the little kitchenette, and I moved into that main room there. And just as I moved into that main room, I stumbled on the rug, and I, and I fell, and I, the fruit went everywhere. And she was standing in the doorway of the bedroom, and she said, Why'd you do that? <laughs> I began to freeze. I've been married 35 years. I know there is no answer to that question. What am I going to say? I wanted to count them. I didn't know how many there were, and some were underneath. So. <laughs> If I'd have said that, she'd have whacked me so hard with that pan. <laughs> the other day she said to me, are you leaving the house looking like that? <laughs> there is no answer. <laughs> If I say no, I don't get to go where I was going. If I say yes, I die. Why doesn't she just say to me, sweetheart, if you're going to leave wearing those two colors in the same general area, you need to hire a referee. Someday, son, your wife is going to come home. She'll be shopping. She's shopping. And she'll come home and she'll walk in the front door. She'll say, I bought this today. <laughs> What do you think of it? <laughs> do not say a word. God is a wonderful God, and He created us as absolute idiots. We do not know the answer to that question. 
What do you think of this? Oh, I tried, son, I tried. I said, oh, it's fine. You don't like it. <laughs> no. It's fine. It's really fine. What's wrong with it? Why wouldn't you like it? Honey, it's fine. I said, what do you want me to say? She said, if you thought it was fine, if you thought it was beautiful, you would say, that makes you look beautiful, and it makes me desire you. I was so happy. I had the answer. I said to her, sweetheart, that dress makes you look beautiful and I desire you. She said, you're just saying that because I told you. <laughs> and son, if your wife ever comes in and says, does this dress make me look big? <laughs> Run! I gotta start to wrap this up. I moved from Colorado, Denver, Colorado, beautiful Denver, Colorado, filled with majestic mountains, beautiful blue sky, a hundred, actually 300 days of sunshine a year. I moved from Denver, Colorado recently to Nashville, Tennessee. Let me tell you about Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado is so gorgeous and so beautiful. Some special things about Denver. You could leave your lights on all night long, leave all the doors open in your house in Denver, Colorado. And when you get up in the morning, your house will be free of bugs. There will be no bugs in there. There might be one lonely moth that got lost on the way to Tennessee. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have lived in Tennessee. Tennessee is a totally different place. Tennessee is where bugs are born and grow and live. <laughs> Huge bugs, bugs you never understand. My dog ate a lizard in my kitchen. A lizard said it tastes like chicken. <laughs> then a spider ate my dog. Tennessee is a veritable Jurassic Park. My house has roaches in it where they come in and, and you fight with them for several minutes and then you make a truce and they go away and the man comes and sprays around your house and they laugh at that and come in other places, bugs everywhere. You leave your house for 30 seconds and in Nashville, Tennessee and leave a window open that much, you'll come back, they'll be sitting on your couch watching the football game, <laughs> eating your popcorn. So why should I move to Tennessee? In order to tell you that, I got to tell you another story. A year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, I stood in the hallway of a major hospital. On the other side of the door of that hallway was my 24-year-old daughter giving birth to my first grandchild. This is totally different than it used to be, folks. When my first daughter was born, they had a restraining order that kept me from going anywhere near the hospital. <laughs> you remember that, guys? You were in the like, it's a woman thing. You're not allowed in there. It's a big secret. It's no secret anymore. We had 20 people in there. We were having a party up until 10 minutes before the baby was born. You know how different this is? Halfway through the party, I turned to my daughter and I said, are you okay? Are you having one of them contraction things? And they drug you up so much, she put down a glass of orange juice she was drinking and said, looked up at this big monitor and she said, oh, yep, I'm having one right there. I remember when my daughter was born, I leaned over my wife and I said, are you having one of them contraction things? That's the last thing I remember. <laughs> yeah, I just had one right there. <laughs> Doctor came in, he said, baby's coming, y'all gotta leave. 
So we all left. I stood outside the door. And as I stood there waiting, I heard the voice of a child whose voice had never been heard on the face of the earth before. A child who somewhere within her little body had my blood coursing through her veins. And I collapsed. <laughs> I'm a healthy guy. My knees buckled, and I collapsed in the hallway. I learned something that day. I learned that if you collapse in the hallway of a major hospital, <laughs> people come from everywhere. I learned something else that day. <laughs> Never let them do that thing to you. <laughs> that hurts like fire. <laughs> and once they start that, you can't get them to stop. <laughs> ow! Oh! Oh, ow! Ow, I... Ow! Oh, my daughter's having a... Ow! Quit it! Son, if you're ever laying down and you hear someone yell clear, stand up. <laughs> they brought the baby out and they took her to the aquarium. You know, a little baby aquarium, you know what I'm talking about? You got about 85 ugly carp in there. One beautiful child. I press, I press my hands against the window. I point, I brought everybody over, look at there. No, not at the fish. That one over there. And Nurse Cratchit came in. <laughs> she needed a blood sample. So she stabbed my little baby in the foot with a needle to get her blood sample. And that little face wrinkled up. And this grandpa began to beat on the glass. <laughs> I'm yelling, Clear! You, Mrs. Cratchit! Come here! Bring your needle with you! I'll show you a blood sample. <laughs> I learned something else that day. Only takes the SWAT team two and a half minutes to get to the hospital. <laughs> Grandpa, it was one of her first words. <laughs> Grandpa, candy. <laughs> grandpa, Grandpa, candy, can, can, candy, Grandpa. Oh no. Grandpa can't give you candy. Can't, you can't have candy. Grandpa. I love you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Here, you can have a candy. There you go. It's a baby Ruth. <laughs> it's probably good for you. It says baby right on it. Yeah, and Ruth was in the Bible, so it's okay. Well, Grandpa learned that he couldn't do that because baby's mother hurt Grandpa. <laughs> I said, you can't. 
can't have candy. And overnight, she began to change her tactics. <laughs> I'm candy! <laughs> oh, don't do that. And then she blew me away. <laughs> now. Okay, okay. You're already crazy. Here, take two. <laughs> I started thinking, that's pretty effective. <laughs> How come we stop doing that? <laughs> so one day my beautiful wife says to me, I'd like to go shopping, I want you to go with me. I hate shopping. I hate shopping. I think that's a true lot of us men. You say, oh, there's exceptions. Yeah, you wimps. <laughs> I hate shopping. You ever go to a mall, you see those little 85-year-old guys sitting in the mall waiting for their wife? <laughs> they weren't 85 when they went into the mall. They've been dead for seven years. <laughs> Cobwebs hanging off of them. And somewhere in the mall is their wife, doing what my wife does, shopping. See, men and women, I'm sorry, we are different. This is my philosophy of shopping. Find it, buy it. This is my wife's philosophy of shopping. Find it and compare it to everything in the universe that looks anything like it. <laughs> then compare that. <laughs> compare that to all the prices of the same like things everywhere in the universe. My wife would drive to Hong Kong for a 25 cent sale. But this is shopping. It's the reason why we're sitting out there decomposing in the hallway. <laughs> shopping is this. At a dress rack. Or e or e or e. <laughs> so one day I was sitting out there and I thought, I do not want to decompose. <laughs> I was sitting next to a skeleton. <laughs> None of you believe this. I thought, I, I'll try it. For her sake, I will try it. And I walked into a store. And there I found the most beautiful jacket. It was a Looney Tunes jacket. <laughs> Had my name on it, Looney. <laughs> on the back of the jacket was a beautiful picture of Porky Pig and Bugs Bunny. And it was in beautiful, multicolored circles sewn into the back of the jacket. Oh, it was gorgeous. The sleeves were made of fine Corinthian leather. And I thought, I want the jacket. I will buy the jacket. I will become a shopper. And I went searching for my wife. I ran from the store, running down the halls, listening for the... I found her in one of the stores. I said, sweetheart, come with me. I have learned to shop. Come with me. And we ran together down the hall. And we went into the store. And I said... Found my jacket. She went over to the jacket and began to search it. You know what she was looking for? The price tag. <laughs> I don't care about the price tag. I didn't even look for the price tag. She found the price tag. 
Oh, no. No, 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 no. We could buy a house for what that cost. <laughs> so I started thinking of my little granddaughter. Sweetheart. And your jacket. <laughs> and she looked at me like, what, what are you doing? She said, I want a jacket. She said, what are you doing? We can't afford that. I said, I love you. <laughs> she said, what are you doing? What, you're being weird. I said, okay, jacket. And her eyes got that big around. <laughs> she said, oh, don't do this. Do not do this. I said, I want the jacket. She said, do not do this. She said, I am leaving this store. And she stomped out of the store. And I stomped right behind her. I want the jacket. I want the jacket. You get it, that jacket. We got out into the hall of the Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota the two biggest intersections of hallways in the place. And she turned around and said, stop this now. And I went right down. She had me wrapped around her little finger. I love her so much I can't stand it. Grandpa, follow the wing around the rosy. Ring around the rosy. Pockets full of posy. Ashes, ashes, all fall down. And she insists that you go all the way down. Let's do it again. Ring around the rosy. Pockets full of posy. Ashes, ashes, all fall down. Boom, we all go down. And I go part way down like this. No, gotta go all the way down. We play it 17 times. <laughs> and I lay on the floor and I say, Oh, sweet Kylie, I love you. But Grandpa has fallen down and he can't get up. <laughs> You know how smart they are? She goes, Grandpa, clear. <laughs> I want to show you a picture of her. It was here somewhere. Oh, here it is, right here. <laughs> Could you say no to that face? <laughs> Me neither. I'm on a plane 30,000 feet on my way to Guam. You see, what happened was her father, her father, an evil man. <laughs> Not really an evil man. I love him with all my heart, but after a year and a half where she was at my house every day, he decided to move from Denver, Colorado to Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and he had the audacity to take that child with him. <laughs> and on a plane at 30,000 feet, I was pondering if I should move. And I wrote on a piece of paper all of the reasons that I 
should stay in Colorado. I filled the entire side of the paper, beautiful skies, hunting, fishing, wonderful shopping, all of the things I had grown <laughs> to love <laughs> about Colorado. And on the other side was one name, Kylie Brielle Shear. Grandpa, I love you. <laughs> See, I learned a lesson that day. People are so much more important than things. I would rather take the financial hit of moving to Tennessee so that I can be near my two daughters and their wonderful husband and this little baby. <laughs> it's what this program is all about. It's why I moved to Tennessee, because life is about relationships. You folks come in here, and some of you are facing unbelievable tragedy in your own home. Some of you have lost loved ones. Some of you have grandchildren and children that are going in directions that are destroying their lives. And a couple of jokes that I tell aren't going to change that one tiny bit. The stories, the funny stories that I tell, God is pleased. He loves to see your laughter. He loves to see you smile. He loves to see you spit on people around you. <laughs> but he knows that nothing changes lives except relationship. Being with the people we love and taking advantage of what God has made available to us. The saving knowledge of knowing that God sees you just the way you are and knows the problems that you face and gave his son so that you might live is the only thing that brings hope at a time like we have faced. And the only thing that brings hope in the times that you have faced and that you're facing now. The punchlines will be gone in a moment. Those of you who are my age, they're already gone. But the peace and love and forgiveness that he brings lasts forever. And that's our reason for joy. God bless you. Good night. Why are you laying there? What? Why are you laying there? I don't want to miss the show.